Reeds, water grasses, and microorganisms play a vital role as natural purifiers, absorbing impurities in the water and using them for nourishment. But things came along that even nature could not purify. The synthetic detergents that were first used in the 1970s contained substances that microorganisms were unable to break down. Conditions were such that foam was even to be found at water purification facilities. There were bubbles, suds in the river, and at the purification plant as well. The foam was nearly my height. We were all surprised, and we couldn't get rid of it. It poured out of the faucets, too. There was nothing we could do because of the chemical ingredients. All manner of discharge from people's daily lives flowed into lakes and was trapped in enclosed harbors. With nowhere to go, it accumulated for years and even decades. When the nitrogen and phosphorus commonly found in household runoff became overabundant, this resulted in eutrophication, and the plankton that feeds on these substances multiplied rapidly in lakes and swamps throughout the country. Even Japan's largest lake, into which 112 Class I rivers flow, was steadily becoming polluted. The reeds and water grasses that would normally have purified the lake's water had been displaced by a concrete embankment. The lake had been robbed of its own natural ability to purify itself. In Lake Biwa, plankton reproduced with abandon and red tides were observed. Ayako Fuji, who lives near Lake Biwa, was among those who were shocked by this news. It being such a large lake, I didn't think pollution would affect Biwa, but that was short-sighted. I came to realize that even for a lake this size, the daily discharge was quite a burden. That's when it really hit me. In the sense that my drinking water was polluted, I was a victim. But I was also polluting the lake. And in that sense, I was a perpetrator. One of the major causes of eutrophication in Lake Biwa was the large amount of phosphorus that was to be found in the synthetic detergents used at that time. When they thought about what could be done, Ms. Fuji and fellow members of the local food cooperative tried making soap powder out of the used cooking oil they had gathered from individual households and schools. By making soap from used cooking oil, we keep from pouring it down the drain. We pollute the water less and avoid using detergents that contain phosphorus. In the meantime, we are using a soap that is very natural. It's like killing two or three birds with one stone. That's what we said to encourage one another while we worked hard around Lake Biwa. Little by little, their activities spread. Then Masayoshi Takemura, who was governor of Shiga Prefecture at the time, expressed his determination to reduce the use of synthetic detergents containing phosphorus. They were being used by 80% of the population at that time. The synthetic detergent companies spoke up in protest, saying that this was an infringement on their business freedoms and a violation of the Constitution. They invested an estimated 1 billion yen in advertising, putting all their energy into a public relations campaign to show that synthetic detergents were not bad. In response to the detergent companies, Governor Takemura said, the freedom to do business is not without its limits, and gave his full support to the soap detergent group, creating a budget for the popularization of soap detergents and setting up a system for the collection of unused synthetic detergents. What was amazing about it was that we could see the change on the supermarket shelves. In the beginning, the soap detergents were somewhere off on the side. But then they started taking over and the synthetic detergents got pushed to the side. 
the number of soap detergent users reached 70%, and in 1979, the Prevent Eutrophication in Lake Biwa Ordinance was established. In addition to regulating factory effluent and the discharge from livestock farmers, citizens were not to buy, sell, or make a gift of synthetic detergents that contained phosphorus. All violators would be fined. The soap detergent movement that had begun with citizens near Lake Biwa spread throughout the country. Detergent companies that had been adamantly opposed took a completely different approach and began selling phosphorus-free detergents. The concentrations of phosphorus in Lake Biwa dropped steadily. By replacing phosphorus with an alternative agent, the source of contamination had been suppressed. This experience was proof that it is far more effective to avoid contamination up front than to treat it later. Meanwhile, in the late 1970s, complaints that water was giving off an odor poured into Japan's water purification facilities. Mr. Kojima, who had used large amounts of chlorine in an effort to disinfect water from the Tama River, was unable to get rid of the smell. That's the smell of ammonia. Even activated charcoal can't absorb that smell. I tried all kinds of chemicals, but none was able to oxidize the ammonia. Then, Mr. Kojima noticed the activity of microorganisms on the riverbed. By chance, I thought of rivers. It occurred to me that in a river, the amount of ammonia decreases. In about 20 kilometers, the ammonia decreases by 90 percent. So I thought there must be a mechanism in the river that removes the ammonia. An investigation of the membrane on the surface of stones in a riverbed revealed the presence of numerous active microorganisms that were clearly performing the role of purifying the river. When it is flowing, the river is clean. This is because of a thin membrane on the stones on the riverbed. But with only one membrane, the river must flow for 20 kilometers to get clean. If there were lots of membranes and the water flowed through them, it would be 100 or 200 times as effective. Mr. Kojima piled up the stones and had the water run through them. He also introduced oxygen to increase the activity of the microorganisms. After the water had passed through numerous layers of stones and microbes, it was 80% cleaner. Many water purification facilities make use of layers of microorganisms, and the water no longer smells. 70% of the population now has sewage treatment. Sewage treatment facilities have begun to make use of advanced technology that utilizes microorganisms in the removal of nitrogen and phosphorus. But this technology is extremely expensive, and the reality is that we have not learned to live in a way that is not polluting. Eutrophication continues slowly to this day, reminding us that it's not easy to return nature to its original state once we have damaged it. And we have not completely resolved the matter of household runoff either. However, through the efforts of individuals, companies, and the government, Japan's rivers, once given up for dead, have improved. In order to restore this water we cannot live without, we must continue to endeavor. <laughs>